Hello everyone, so today we're going to look at stalls in an aircraft, what causes them and how to recover from one. To understand how it all works, we need to know a little bit of aerodynamic theory first, so let's take a look at that just now. So we all know that planes can fly because they have wings, but how does it all work? Because a wing is a heavy metal object which usually contains fuel, that's where the shape of the wing comes into play. So here we have a picture of a wing. If you imagine looking end onto the wing, this is the shape that you would see. This would be the front of the wing and this would be the back. When the wind hits the front of the wing it splits and travels over and under the wing. Due to the curve on top of the wing the air speeds up which in turn causes low air pressure above the surface of the wing. The air underneath the wing travels slower causing higher air pressure. These two forces work together and push the wing up like so. This is called lift and when the wing is attached to a plane this is what lifts the plane into the air and this is how heavy metal objects can fly. The next thing we need to know about is something called the angle of attack. Basically, this is the angle at which the wing is hitting the air. As the angle increases, the air flowing over the top of the wing tends to stick and follow the curve of the wing. The angle of attack can change when the plane is travelling slowly or when an aggressive manoeuvre is done. If you keep increasing the angle of attack, there's a point at which the air travelling over the top of the wing cannot remain in contact and separates away from the surface of the wing. This is known as the critical angle of attack, and this separation of airflow from the wing is what causes a stall, where the wing is no longer producing lift. So now we know what causes a plane to stall, all we need to do to recover the plane is to simply restore airflow over the wing, which will generate lift again. So to do this, we need to reduce the angle of attack. When flying, this is most often accomplished by pitching the plane down, so the angle of attack is reduced. Then once airflow has been restored, gently bring the plane back to stable flight. Stalls can occur during takeoff and landing, so pilots practice regularly so that stall recovery becomes an instinctive reaction. With this in mind, there's two types of stalls we'll be practicing a power on stall, which mimics the plane's behaviour during takeoff, and a power off stall, which is used to replicate conditions during approach and landing. So, without further ado, let's jump into a plane and practice power off stalls. Okay, so here we are flying along at 3,000 feet, and uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna, just going to talk you through what I'm going to do for this power off stall. So the first step is going to be to reduce the throttle to 1500 RPM. Then what we'll do is we'll also increase the flaps to 20 degrees um, in increments. Um, but what we'll do is rather than hold our altitude, we'll let the plane descend for at about 500 feet per minute, and we'll try to trim the plane out for that. Then once we're happy that everything's settled, will reduce the power to idle but then try and hold that 500 feet per minute and what will happen is it will be similar to slow flight the plane will just keep pitching up will keep holding back on the stick and then the speed will eventually drop to down to a dangerous level when it does reach that dangerous level what will happen is we'll hear like an audible warning in the cockpit so when we hear that what we'll do is we'll just drop the nose down and apply full power then what we'll do is we'll check check the speed quickly, make sure the needle is in the green arc and then pull the plane out of the dive. One thing we'll also need to be aware of as well is when we um, increase the throttle again we'll get some of that p-factor effect where the plane will try to pull to the left so we'll need to remember to put in some right rudder to counteract that. Okay so let's do that just now. So reduce the throttle to 1500 rpm and we'll just hold our altitude for the time being, let the speed drop off and then we'll increase the flaps so that's 10 degrees of flaps and 20 degrees of flaps start trimming the plane now if you look at the vertical speed we're about minus 500 feet per minute which is what we want ok so now let's go for the stall so just keep pulling the nose up try to maintain that uh, minus 500 feet per minute okay so power to idle keep pulling back speeds getting very low so there's the morning so, so drop the nose apply full power right rudder speeds climbing up again so we'll just pull the plane gently out of the stall then what we'll do is once we're happy that we're climbing and we're at a safe speed we'll bring the flaps back up ok 
what I'll do is I'll go through that again, what I'll do is I'll just get ourselves back up to about 3,000 feet turn away from that mountain as well, that'll be a good idea so it, it does happen quite quickly but once you've done it a couple of times it's actually quite easy to uh, to recover from a stall, it's not, uh, not that drastic at all ok so reduce the power to 1500 rpm speed's already kind of low so we'll put the flaps out again, that's 10 degrees that's 20 plane's already pitched quite well so there we go, so we're at minus 500 now so we'll just start pulling back, power all the way to idle and then just keep pulling back speed's down about 55 knots now Keep pulling back. Can I get a warning any minute now? There's the warning, so drop the nose, full power, right rudder. Speed's climbing up again, so we'll just pull it out of the dive there. There you go. And then, once we're happy that we're climbing safely and at a good speed, reduce the flaps. So the, the the difficulty you might have with um, doing stalls in FSX is that you can't really feel what the plane is doing. Um, so I'd recommend doing it as soon as you hear the um, the warning sound there. I'd recommend that's when you drop the nose and and do it. So you're not really getting into a deep stall as such. You know, you know the stall's not really developing because you're going to act on it straight away. But um, you know that's because you can't really feel what the plane is doing which is a bit unfortunate, but that's uh, that's one of the limitations of uh, flight simulation, unfortunately. So what I'll do is I'll just get ourselves back up to 3,000 feet, and then we'll have a look at power on stalls, which work quite similar, but um, there's a few there's a few subtle differences. So, 3,000 feet there. What I'll do is I'll just trim it off, and I'll start talking through power on stalls. So, similar to uh, power off stalls, what we'll do is we'll reduce the throttle to 1500 RPM. Rather than um, descending or using any flaps, we'll just um, start pulling back so that we maintain our current altitude. Then when we hit about 60 knots, we'll increase the throttle to about 2000 RPM. And then what we'll do is we'll start pulling the... Um, oh sorry, before I go to the next step, um, when we increase the throttle, again, we'll need to remember that P-factor effect. So we'll need to use a bit of right rudder to uh, to control that. Um, once we increase the throttle, we'll uh, pull the plane into a climb, and we need to make sure that it's going to be steeper than what we um, what we normally do after takeoff. So it's going to be quite a steep climb. The plane is going to be pitched up quite quite sharply. What will happen is the speed will fall, and we'll get the um, the stall warning again. So just like before, when we get that warning, we drop the nose down, apply full power again. Remember the rudder to control the p-factor and then once we're happy that the speed's good we'll just pull it out of it straight away so let's try it just now so reduce the throttle to 1500 rpm and we'll just start pulling back remember there's no flaps involved so we'll just keep pulling back to hold our altitude so there we are at about 60 knots so we'll increase the throttle again right rudder to control that P factor there and then what we'll do is we'll just keep pulling the plane up into a sharp or a steep uh, climb rather so speed's getting lower, speed's getting lower there's the warning so we drop the nose full power, right rudder speed's climbing again and we'll just pull it out of the dive and recover back to a climb. Nice and easy. I, I think power on stalls um, for me are easier than power off stalls. Like, or, or I find that the plane kind of recovers more, uh, the plane recovers quicker than in a, a power off stall. Okay, so we'll do that again. So we'll reduce the throttle to 1500 RPM. Pull back to hold our altitude. Once the speed gets down to about 60, 
increase the throttle to about 2000 rpm. A bit of right rudder to control that movement. And then we'll pull it into a steep climb. There's the warning, so we'll drop the nose. Full power. The speed's climbing again. And then we'll just bring the nose back up slowly. And that is uh, power on stalls. Uh, and then, as I said, you know, it's, it doesn't take too long to get the hang of them. And then once you do, you can, you know, you can start being a bit silly with it. So, you know, it is a game after all. So, uh, so you know, see see what you can do. So, like just now, put power to idle. I'm just holding back on the stick. And I'm not going to let this go. And then push it forward. So you see, that was a bit more of an extreme stall. I, I kind of deliberately held the plane in that one for a bit longer. But it's exactly the same recovery. Drop the nose, power to full, and then uh, pull out of it. And that's all I've got for stalls. In the next video, we'll be looking at spins, which is another more dramatic type of stall. So uh, I hope to see you there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you later.